Alright, in the last video you saw me get this K1C printing. Now I'm going to root it so I can start using mainsail. I'll just kind of quickly go over this, but I will leave a link to a much better video tutorial that I actually used. I'll also just add that it was really simple to do if you want to do this yourself. Okay, first I went to the settings menu and chose root account information under the system tab. Then I checked the box and waited for the 30 second timer before I could hit OK. After that it gave me the account name and password, which I will need to use a little bit later. Then I went to my computer and opened up a command prompt and typed ssh root et, then my printer's IP address and hit enter. I typed yes to continue and hit enter. Then it asked for the password, which was creality underscore 2023. Next, I copied this line from GitHub and pasted it into the command prompt and let it run, which only took a few seconds. Then I came back and copied this second line from GitHub and pasted it. After that, I was given a menu where I typed 1 and hit enter, which took me to the install menu where I chose everything that I thought I wanted by typing the number associated with it. Here's a list of everything I chose to install, minus Fluid, which I did come back and install later, really just to check it out. Then after exiting Command Prompt and rebooting the printer, I could now go into my browser and put in the printer's IP address, but this time adding a colon 4409. which brought up Mainsail, and that is so much nicer than Creality Print. Immediately I noticed the webcam hadn't shown up. So I went to the settings menu, and then the webcam tab, and hit add webcam. The camera popped up automatically, all I had to do was name it and save it. Then I spent a few minutes organizing the layout until I was happy with it. Now that I was done with that, I wanted to level this bed because it was pretty far off. The range was originally almost 3 millimeters, but after adjusting the belts a little bit on the bottom, I got it down to 1.7, and I thought I could probably get it a lot better if I use these washers I found, that all happen to be half a millimeter thick. So I just added them under the screws that mount the bed. I ended up getting the range to be within 0.4, which I'm pretty satisfied with. Alright, so I got the new glass. They packed that glass with so much packing this time. Got the new fan in there. I printed out some, uh, I printed out the spool pieces. I have these swinging door hinges that I printed out of PETG that uh, makes the door open a lot wider. I'm not going to film putting them on. I'll just show you it all when it's done. Anyway, I'm going to get this stuff installed and uh, see what it looks like after. These fans are basically the same thing. Thinking I can just take this off because it's practically coming off. Looks like it's just got some glue there. Uh, the only thing is, the plugs are different. 
I can just desolder from right here. Solder it up on here on the new fan. To me that's nicer looking than having a splice. No big deal. But uh now let's see if I can get this off. Can get this whole face off. So that's just held on by glue right there. Where's that? Can I just mount this? Oh yeah. Perfect. And there you go. No splice. And the fan is mounted. I did have to use nuts. But fan's mounted. Now I'm just going to put it all back together. Alright, and with that, I have to say that I personally think I got a pretty good deal on this printer. I've printed several things with it now, and I haven't had an issue. I'm confident that this will become my main printer now, and I'm looking forward to adding some more upgrades down the road. First and foremost, adding some extra lighting inside for those time lapses. But at any rate, that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate you tuning in, catch you in the next one, and as always, have the best day ever.